All right, folks, first I'd like to welcome everyone to our Pay Clock Online demo today. Um, today we'll be talking about the day-to-day -day operations in the Pay Clock system to give you a little bit of an idea of what tools you have at your disposal and how to use those tools to manage in Pay Clock Online your time and attendance in a very quick and efficient manner. Um, for today's exercise, I have a demo database that's already configured for us that has some information pre-populated, and we're going to use that information uh, to illustrate some of the tools that you will have at our disposal. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop straight into things and let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about our home screen. The first place that you're going to land when you get into the pay clock system is going to be on something that's called our home screen. This home screen is designed to be like a dashboard, similar to the dashboard in your vehicle that gives you information about how fast you're going, how much gas you may have in the tank, what temperature everything may be running at at this particular moment. Well, the home screen is a similar concept that gives you an idea of what's going on with your payroll at a glance. Um, as we go forward into the home screen, we're going to talk about one of our first tools. That is going to be our in-out board. Um, the in-out board itself gives you a representation of, of which employees are currently on staff. Very simply, who is clocked in at this exact moment and who is clocked out. Um, what happens with this in-out board, even if you're using a traditional time clock, if you're using our pay clock web portal, or even our mobile application is whenever the employee verifies themselves, their status to the right of their name will actually change. So this little out indicator that we have for this particular employee will turn to a little green in indicator, notating that that particular employee is clocked in currently at that time. So you can use this to kind of see who's on staff at any given moment. And of of course, this is just one of the tools that we have at our disposal on our home screen. The next one of the tools that I want to talk about is something called our hours and wages overview. Um, what this hours and wages overview does is it gives you a graphical representation of the hours that have been paid out to your employee. So at any given moment, you can hover over one of the sections in your hours and wages overview, and you'll be greeted with a tally of the hours that have been paid to that employee based on pay code. So we can see how many hours of regular time we've paid out to our employees, how many hours of overtime, any other non-work pay codes that have been awarded to our employees like vacation and holiday hours, we can see that as well. For my high level administrators in the system, we can also see wage information, which will allow you to kind of compare dollars to donuts and allow you to kind of see what your labor costs are based on pay code. So how much our regular time is costing us, how much our overtime is costing us, those other pay codes that we talked about, we can use that kind of as a barometer to kind of see where we are as far as our labor costing. Now, one of the most important features on our home screen is not even lit up yet. That takes us to the exceptions overview. Now, let's talk about it by actually highlighting exactly what an exception is. In the pay clock system, there is some logic built in that allows if certain types of events occur, those events can be flagged. So let's say if your employee, um, let's say if they have a um, an odd number of punches on their time card, or let's say if they have a shift in a schedule applied to them and they arrive late, or they depart early, or they take too long of a break, or show up on a day that they're not supposed to, any time the logic that's built into pay clock detects something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, it's going to create a bar graph for you to highlight those particular events, to give you an indicator of exactly how much work or how many edits you'll have to make once we get into the main event of everything, which is of course going to be the time card section in pay clock. We're going to light this exceptions overview up in just a couple moments and kind of talk about some of the exceptions that you have. Um, but this is your home screen. This is kind of like a little appetizer before we get into the main event of everything. It's designed just like it could be a dashboard for you to give you insight into what's going on right now in pay clock. So hold on tight as we go a little bit further into the pay clock system, we're going to talk about the main event, which is going to be all of our employee time cards.
The employee time cards in the pay clock system are broken up into two very easy to read sections up top for each employee. They're also going to have a totals row up top, which will isolate the total hours that they have, a breakdown of where those hours are accumulated based on pay code. So how much is regular time, how much is overtime, any other non-work pay codes that may have been accumulated in the system, you'll be able to see those as well. But where all of the business happens is going to be down below in our detailed time card section. This is where you will see on a standard day for an employee the four slots that an employee can use for their punch data. Now, if an employee needs more slots for their punches, the system will automatically add them as long as the employee continues to interact with the system. But traditionally, you normally have four slots in for the start of your shift, out for lunch, back in from lunch, and then of course out at the end of the day. At the end of that particular day, you're going to have a day total, which will give you the total hours for that particular horizontal row. And you can also see grand totals and a breakdown of hours as we go a little bit further into the time card. But I do want to talk about some basic functions in the pay clock system. One of those is actually removing punches from the system and then also making edits. So at any given moment, you can make edits to these time cards. So let's say if I wanted to, um, if I had an employee that started their day a little bit earlier than what they clocked in at, um, I can change this 9 a.m. punch here simply by just double clicking on the cell to make an edit. And if I wanted to clock that employee in at 8 a.m., I could do so very quickly and easily. And with this 12 p.m. punch that's directly next door, let's say I wanted to remove it for whatever reason and make a new edit. I can most certainly do that very easily by selecting the cell in question and then going to the delete key here at the top of my time card. And that will allow me to remove that particular punch. As we go further into the pay clock system, um, you can see that when I removed that punch, that actually created a little red flag next to this employee's name. This is your exception indicator that the logic that's built into pay clock that works in real time for us has picked up that there's something odd about this employee's time card. So currently on Monday, this employee is missing a punch. Let's zoom back to our home screen for just a quick moment. As stated before, things are updated in real time. So as soon as an exception is detected, we can now see that we have one missing punch registration that's already in the system. So we can kind of manage these exceptions very quickly and easily in the pay clock system. Let's swing back to our time card for just a moment and let's go back to Lynn Dibble and let's talk about the different ways that you can view your employee information in the time card. We're gonna take care of this little pesky exception in just a moment. Now, with your traditional time card view, you have your totals row, your detailed time card below, and then, of course, you have your functions to insert times if you'd like to, allow an employee to transfer departments if necessary. Um, you can even insert non-work time and even dollar amounts to compensate for commissions and tips. So you have all of those options available to you immediately in the time card, and you can put them wherever you'd like. Um, we have our delete key, and you even have the ability to add notes to a particular day if you'd like as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. Um, but the traditional time card view, you should be able to select an employee very quickly and easily and see their information. Now, another way to view your time and attendance data in pay clock is through something that we call our summary view. The summary view itself is going to take the totals row that you see for each employee, and it's going to aggregate it onto one chart for you. I like to call this our living, breathing payroll report. Reason being is because whenever your employees clock out for their particular day, their totals are immediately calculated in the pay clock system and they're added to their totals row. So at the beginning of your pay period, your totals are going to look pretty light, but as your employees clock in and out and start adding hours to their time cards, your summary view is going to start to inflate those totals as well. And you can use this to compare and contrast at any given point in time in the pay clock system. Now, of course, that little pesky exception that we created a little bit earlier is still following our employee. So I do want to talk about how we can isolate multiple exceptions and also correct them very quickly and easily as well. And that takes us to our exceptions overview. So no matter how many exceptions you have in the pay clock system that have been picked up, um, you can actually isolate your exceptions 
to this particular area so you don't have to sift through each individual time card to find out where they are. This way you can manage your time cards very quickly and very efficiently. So let's say if I needed to make a correction to this employee's time card and for Monday here, if I wanted to go ahead and add a punch, I could go directly to my insert menu, go to insert registration, select the date and the time of the particular registration that I'd like to add. And I can go ahead and add it very quickly and easily. And now that exception disappears from our time card. In addition, the exception indicator that was next to that employee's name is now gone as well. So editing time cards, making sure information is correct, is a very, very easy process that we try to make very efficient in our pay clock system going forward. So just to recap, uh, we talked a little bit about our home screen that gives us insight into what's going on immediately in the pay clock system. And then we've also talked about your employee time cards where we have our individual data for our employees that's easily selectable and editable no matter which way you choose to manage your employees. Now, as we go a little bit further into the pay clock system, one of the main uh, purposes of having a time and attendance system is to get feedback from your particular system. And in pay clock, we do that in the form of reports. Currently, as of right now, there are about 49 different reports that are in the pay clock system currently. Um, I'm definitely not going to go through every single one of these, but I do want to highlight a couple very common reports that a lot of my customers use um, that will give you access to a lot of the information that you need to get payroll completed. The first of these is going to be our employee time card report. The employee time card report is going to take all of the punch data that we had on our time cards that was displayed before and puts it on a particular hard copy report for you so that you could select any employee that you would like and you can also see every single punch that that employee has created during the course of this particular pay period. As you go forward, you can see that information. Of course, you won't be able to edit it from here. You'll have to go back to the time card screen to make any changes, but now you have a hard copy that can be saved as a PDF, Excel, or HTML um, of your punch data for this particular employee. In addition to the punch data that you see for your employees, you also have your totals down bottom. And this will also departmentalize employee hours if your employees work in different departments throughout the course of the day. Um, and this report even has signature lines that your employees can sign off on. And any notes that you've added to an employee's time card will also be displayed down bottom. And you can run this report for a group of employees. You can run it for previous pay periods if you'd like. Um, you have lots of different options that you can use with this particular employee time card. Another report that I'd love for you to take a look at is going to be your period totals report. Uh, the period totals report is very similar to the summary view that we talked about a little bit before. Uh, this period totals report is going to take the total hours that have been gathered for your employees, the regular time, the overtime, the non-work pay codes, and puts it all onto one particular sheet of paper for you. Um, if anybody's looking for a particular payroll report, this is probably going to be as close to it as you will get. So if you want total hours for your employees, you can definitely pull your period totals report up very quickly and easily. And then, of course, you have your employee time card report if you want to get into more detail as far as punch data for each particular employee. Another report that's not so common but um, a lot of my customers really like is something called the Employee Punch Compliance Report. Now this Employee Punch Compliance Report helps us understand if our employees are holding up their end of the bargain as well. So with this particular report, it gives us information about how many times an employee was able to create punches on their own, either using our traditional time clocks, the pay clock web portal, or the pay clock mobile app, how many times an administrator or supervisor has had to go back behind them and make an edit to that particular information, the total punches on the time card, what percentage was edited, and also to let us know if we have any missing punches, late arrivals, or early departures based on any assigned schedules that you have for the employee. 
So this is a perfect report, let's say, if you wanted to do a performance review for your employees. Um, and the best part is you don't have to run it for just your traditional pay clock pay period that you have. You can even run most of the reports that are in the pay clock system for a custom date range. So you can run it for a three month period or a six month period or for a whole entire year if you'd like. And you can use this to um, kind of gauge if your employees are kind of holding up there in the bargain. And that's just a few of some of the reports that you can run in the pay clock system. Um, they run the full gamut of employees that are approaching overtime, or if you want to see an audit trail report that's going to let you know who changed what and for what reason. Um, there are lots of different reports in the pay clock system that will definitely give you feedback on a lot of information that you're looking for. And that's just only the beginning. In addition to the reports that we can gather in our pay clock system, we can also export data out of the pay clock system. Currently, pay clock supports quite a few different export formats. Um, if you're using any traditional payroll software or any service bureaus like your ADPs, um, paychecks, um, even their support in here for Sage. And um, we also have a very special relationship with QuickBooks as well. And even some of the smaller service bureaus and payroll companies, uh, we have you pretty much covered there. In most cases, PayClock can create a flat file that you could import directly into the Service Bureau softwares, and it'll allow you to take your time and attendance data and accurately represent it over there. Now, for my QuickBooks users, um, you guys are in a very unique situation. With QuickBooks, PayClock will allow you to have two-way communication um, between um, these particular applications. What I mean by that, if you're using QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks, um, QuickBooks Online, doesn't matter which one that you're using, you're going to have two main functions that you'll be able to do. Number one, you will be able to synchronize employee data. What I mean by that is if it's your initial setup or it's your first time setting up a pay clock system, we can import your entire employee roster without you having to type them in by hand for your employees to set them up in the pay clock system. This saves you a lot of time and energy, especially with your initial setup. And then, of course, if you have new hires, you can add them to your QuickBooks system and then synchronize them to pay clock and get them ready to start working immediately. On the flip side of that, when it's time to send your payroll data to QuickBooks, pay clock can also take all of the hours that are represented in our system, and we can also add them to your QuickBooks employee time cards very quickly and easily. The good news is that process takes about 30 to 60 seconds, and everything is accurately represented over there. So um, you can create flat files for just about any other uh, particular service bureau or piece of software that you have available. And then, of course, you have QuickBooks, which gives you two-way communication between that particular app. And that's just the beginning. Um, as we go a little bit further into the pay clock system, I do want to talk about our employees and how easy it is to get employees into the pay clock system. Setting up a new employee is as easy as adding a last name, a first name, and an employee number in the system. Um, we also have backup methods for, let's say, authentication if the employee would like to use a PIN number at a particular clock, or let's say if they'd like to use a proximity badge, you can add one for them as well. Um, in our general tab, you also have the ability to classify employees by the type of employee they are. If they're a contract employee, uh, full-time, part-time, temporary if necessary, you can assign them to a pay class or a payroll cycle if you have alternating payroll cycles. You can even assign a home location or even a department or a job title to these employees. So that's just the beginning of information that you can put in for our employees. We can also add personal data like addresses and phone numbers. One thing we don't ask for is any um, secretive data like let's say social security numbers and things of that nature. We just simply don't need it immediately in our pay clock system. We wanna make sure that your employees hours are documented and we don't need a social security number to pull that off. Now, um, one thing that's on our general tab that opens up a host of other features for you is the ability to add an email address for your employee. 
The email address comes into play for your employees if you want them to use some of the additional features that are built into the pay clock system. When I talk about additional features that are built into pay clock, um, that actually leads me into employee access. With employee access, um, you can actually allow your employees the ability to log into the pay clock system for a number of different reasons. Um, employees can also have their own personalized web portal where they can view their hours for the pay week. They can view their schedules. They can even request time off. And if you would like, you can even give them the luxury of being able to clock in and clock out directly from a computer if necessary. On the other side of that, we also have our pay clock mobile application, which you can turn on for your employees. This mobile application gives you a lot of the features of our web portal, like the ability to view hours. Um, let's say if you want them to have uh, the ability to request time off, or if you want them to go forward and be able to clock in and out from that mobile application, you most certainly can do that. That's great for employees that are out in the field or employees that are on the go. Another great feature of our particular mobile application is if you would like, you can also gather the GPS coordinates of a particular employee. Um, what I mean by that is whenever an employee decides to clock in and out using that mobile app, not only will you be able to see what time they created that particular registration, but you'll also get the GPS coordinates and be able to locate directly where they are on a map if necessary. So that's a very, very powerful feature that's built into pay clock at no additional cost for you. Um, some of my customers really like the convenience of having the employee uh, be able to request time off without having to have a paper trail or anything of that nature because the pay clock system does a lot of that heavy lifting for you. So that's just the beginning of what you could do with your employees. Of course, we can add personal data like home addresses, emergency contact info. You can even add a picture of the employee for identification's sake as well. So that's just um, another one of the features that you can go into um, as far as setting up employees in the pay clock system. Now, we've talked about our home screen, we've talked about time cards, we've talked about getting feedback from the system with our reports and exports, but I do wanna talk about who is going to have access um, to the system, who's basically going to be doing the driving in the pay clock system. And that leads me to users and user setup. Out of the box, you're gonna have one main administrative user in the pay clock system. This is the master account for pay clock. It has access to your billing and subscription information. It can add employees, delete employees, even see wage information if it's added to the system. But maybe you wanna delegate some authority to other users in the system that don't have a responsibility to clock in and clock out. You can do so very quickly and easily by setting up alternate users in the pay clock system. In order to add an additional user, you will require a last name, first name, and email address. You can create a username and password for that user. And then with that particular user, you can also select an access profile that works in PayClock. Now with your access profile, you can actually go through and select what privileges your employees or your users will actually have. Um, if I go into view details here, we can kind of select what particular features and permissions that the supervisor will have. So, of course, our administrator is going to have access to everything in the pay clock system, and you can't edit that particular profile. But with our supervisor, let's say if we wanted someone that should be able to go into time cards and make edits and make approvals and things of that nature, but they shouldn't be able to close a pay period and lock everyone out. Or let's say if they can go in and edit schedules, they can run reports, but we don't want them messing around with our clock configuration or the setup menu to change any of our functions that we have that's in for our employees. We can even strip out the ability for wages to be seen by those particular users. And of course, these access profiles are customizable if you'd like, so we can make it so that you can edit them pretty much exactly to your liking. The great thing about access profiles and our user list is that you're not limited to how many users you can have in the system. You can have one main administrator and you can have 10 different supervisors if you want. 
even better with those particular supervisors, you can even assign employees to a particular supervisor. So that employee or that particular supervisor will only see employees that are under his administrative umbrella. So your shift A employees or your shift A supervisor will only be able to see employees that are on shift A, but your administrator can go in and see the entire roster with no issues. So it makes it easy for you to delegate authority in the pay clock system. So let's say if you want to have that supervisor manage time cards, but at the end of the pay week, your administrator can go in, export that data and run all the reports that him or her may need. Um, so that's very, very powerful tools that we have at our disposal. And that's kind of how we allow um, that's how we kind of allow the pay clock system to take your payroll day and make it a payroll hour, if at all possible. So we give you a system that's very simple, that gives you the ability to manage time cards, make edits, get all the information that you need, but yet it's flexible for your business going forward. So that if you have changes in the system, let's say if you have a large supervisor list, you can add those supervisors to the system. If you have, let's say different groups of employees, you can departmentalize those employees and see exactly um, who is organized by what particular category. You most certainly can do that in the system. That's why pay clock works for five employees, 50 employees, or even 500. So if there are any questions about pay clock, definitely feel free to let us know. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. That leads me into the most important concept for pay clock. Um, one of the most important features that you're gonna have access to as a pay clock online subscriber is going to be our world-class technical support. Through the life of your subscription, no matter if you're a user in the system, an administrator, supervisor, you have unlimited access to technical support. So we can assist you making sure that everything is in order in the pay clock system with no issues at no additional cost to you. In most cases, if you have hardware that's going to be connected to your pay clock system, those will be covered by hardware support. What that means is, if, of course, anything happens to that particular hardware and it's deemed defective for whatever reason, we replace it at little to no cost to you. So these are all benefits that are included in your pay clock system. That way we can guarantee that you have working equipment. That way we can guarantee that you have support throughout the process from start to finish, from initial setup to day-to-day -day operations. And you have a system that gives you access to pay clock no matter where you are. As long as you have internet access, you can go directly to the payclock.com website, hop right in and see your time and attendance information. And also a very easy to use system that's gonna do the heavy lifting of calculating your time and attendance. Well, folks, that's just kind of a brief overview of what pay clock can do. If you'd like to go deeper into these particular features, you can definitely set up a consult call with your sales agent, and we can actually go more in depth into some more of the features that you'd love to take a look at in the particular system, and we'll be happy to explain them step by step for you. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out, and thank you for coming out and allowing us to show off what pay clock online can do. In the meanwhile, you have a great day. Bye now.